Christian says that you've got some special thing planned. Yeah, it's like a crazy nine-day festival. All right, hello, hello, and hello everyone out there. My name is Eric Davis. I am thrilled to be here today for a conversation about the upcoming film Midsommar. It hits theaters on July 3rd everywhere, and with the film we have director, writer-director Ari Aster and the stars Florence Pugh and Jack Rayner. Hello, How's everyone. It going? Hello. Thank you for being here. We're very excited to talk about this film. Uh, lots of, I would say, Ari, you know, one thing I want to start out with first, um, nobody's seen this movie yet, uh, but one person has seen this movie, and so I want to share uh, one of the first reactions from this film is from a gentleman named Jordan Peele. He's a writer-director of Get Out and Us, and so I just want to read and I want to get your uh, reaction to what he, his reaction to the film. Uh, so Jordan Peele said, I think you've made the most idyllic horror film of all time. You've taken Stepford Wives and shattered the attractiveness of that movie with this one. That alone is a feat. Also, there are some obvious comps out there, but this movie is just so unique. This hasn't existed yet, and anything after Midsommar is going to have to contend with it. I mean, this unsurps The Wicker Man as the most iconic pagan movie to be referenced. High praise. Jesus. From Mr. Yeah. Peel. Yeah, my first reaction is that he's lost all credibility. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, he saw <clears throat> a very early cut before. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he saw a very early cut before like any VFX, uh, sound mix, color, wow. music. Um, so I just wonder what. <laughs> I wonder what he'll think next week. But uh, it is, but it, I mean, it, it, it is high praise, you know, and I think uh, you, uh, alongside Jordan Peele, I think are doing very interesting things in the genre right now and telling, uh, you can't just say they're horror movies because I think there's so much other layers to it. Uh, audiences will be most familiar with you uh, due to the sort of the breakout hit of your last film, which was Hereditary. And I think that film uh, had a lot of different things going on with it. It was a family drama. It had some sort of occultishness vibes to it, some, uh, some occult stuff. So I guess the first question that a lot of audience members have, and I'll give to you, is how does this separate itself from Hereditary, Midsommar? Um, I mean, aesthetically, like, the differences are pretty clear. Sure. One, one is very dark and one is very bright. Um, if anything, I'm, I've become pretty struck by how similar they are, uh, uh, they are in different ways. Um, both films are very much about family. Mm -hmm. um, Hereditary, I guess, was sort of a, a, a film about f family dysfunction, mm -hmm. and this is something of a horror film about codependency. Um, Bad breakup. I've heard you compare the, describe this film as both an adult fairy tale and a bad breakup movie. Yeah, um, <laughs> that 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 that's still the only way I really feel comfortable describing the film. It's it's a it's a, a an operatic breakup movie and um, and a, a dark contemporary fairy tale. That's that's what it is. And which sounds amazing. Uh, the two people who are breaking up in the movie uh, are played by you two. So uh, why don't we start by um, uh, telling us what about these roles and what about this film sort of attracted you to them? <laughs> Jack, you can go. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, um, I met Ari kind of at the beginning of 2018 and we sat down to talk about the film and I'd read the script. And um, I think like there was one version of my character, at least on paper, who was just kind of like an unforgivable dick, basically. <laughs> and, uh, you know, was pretty one note. But within the way it was written, I could see how actually, you know, maybe there's a part of this guy who's just kind of looking for his autonomy a little bit and, you know, is not, you know, he's just reached the end of his ability to participate in the relationship. and. I was really intrigued about working with Ari to find a way to, uh, you know, kind of like portray that in a not cut and dry way, you know, where the kind of moral lines were a bit muddy and, um, you know, where it wasn't just a, um, 
kind of like singular sort of vision for the character where there was a bit bit of room to play with it. Mm. And so I think that, you know, the experience of shooting it with, with, with Ari, you know, he kind of like let me do whatever I wanted to do with the character and find as much of that kind of dynamic kind of energy with him as possible. So um, that was what I did and it was really, really enjoyable. That was what I had hoped for before we set to, set to work on the film and, and that was definitely what I got. And, um, you know, having seen Ari's... Sh Hereditary hadn't come out at the time, so I hadn't seen Hereditary, but I'd seen all of Ari's shorts before mm. that and I just thought, like, this guy is an astonishing filmmaker. Like, what an incredible vision that he has you know and um, so i was really really excited to to work with him and kind of get behind the get behind the film cool florence what about you um ari and i first so i was uh filming a series uh little drama girl at the time and i was in athens and um Hereditary was just about to come out, and just as it was about to come out, there were all these whispers about midsummer that was going to happen that summer. And my team was so excited by it and had read the, read the script. And they were like, Look, if you're going to Skype anyone right now, we know you're busy, but if you're going to Skype anyone, it's going to be Ari. And I was like, Okay, all right. So, like, read the script, amazing. And I came back from a night shoot at like 4 a.m. and we Skyped. And we were both so exhausted, usually at these things, whenever you Skype a director, you never, <laughs> you never really finish the conversation. You go like, okay, well, we'll see what happens in the conversation with our agents. <laughs> and we were both so exhausted that we ended the call with like, look, I would, I would love to do it. Would you have me? And he was like, yeah, I'd love to have you. I mean, great, cool. So we both went to bed having uh, accepted this without telling our agents, which was great. <laughs> um, and then I think the biggest thing for me that kind of... Uh, I was really, really terrified because I've never... I've, I, as Florence, have never come close to anything in terms of my life, trauma-wise and pain-wise and... Um, Grief-wise, I haven't come like anywhere near the the emotional pain that Danny goes through. So I was um, wisely terrified about that because they didn't. I don't think it's something that you could just give it a go. Like I knew that it was very important, and um, that did scare me actually going into it. I, I had I had no idea how to access that. But it was the same kind of fear that really excited me into figuring out who this woman was and, and why she was running away from, uh, I suppose, dealing with it head on. And um, I mean, it was wicked. We got out there and within, we had like a week of rehearsals and, and in that week we did improv as a couple and Ari was the therapist. Oh, oh that's that interesting. Was, so yeah. you played yeah, like a therapy session. We did like a session counseling session. As yeah. a couple. Yeah. yeah. And the first thing that he, when we finished, that was when I punched you in the face. That was, and when he kicked <laughs> me as well. No kidding. Um, <laughs> the first thing that he said uh, when we finished, you, you, I remember you saying you were like, I, I just feel the weight of the guilt, mm. and that's essentially this whole relationship was that. It's, it was just, it's so heavy and so intense, and we had a great time shooting it. But it was like. It's an intense film, and the, the, the stuff that we were doing was um, pretty miraculous. Not for the faint of no. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be wary. We're not spoiling anything, just no so spoilers. you know. There's no spoilers here, but we, we, we do want to know, you know, what can you tell us about this film? Obviously, Florence's character is dealing with a lot of trauma, a lot of grief in her past, uh, and, and now a breakup uh, with this guy. Well... Or maybe a breakup, and then they're going. They're going to a, a festival of some kind. So, what can you say? Sort of give us a little bit of a setup for the for the film, for people who aren't as familiar with it. Um, Look at the walls. I think that's the best. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the Look best. at the walls. Look at the walls. Look at the walls. Pay attention to the walls. And don't pause. Don't pause and zoom in. Don't like be weird about yeah, it. Yeah. Just look at the walls. See what your interpretation see, see is. See what, what you're ready for, and you will be surprised. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just look at the walls. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just look at the walls, everyone. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, yeah, tell us about, you know, just to set up and maybe where the inspiration for the film came from. And I had heard that maybe it, it was a little bit personal for you, um, that it had something to do with, with your own experiences in your own life. And so just talk about where, where, where it came from. 
Yeah, well, you know, um, I, I wanted to, when I was writing the film, I mean, I wanted to write a breakup movie because mm -hmm. I needed to write a breakup movie because I had just gone through a breakup. Okay. Um, and uh, and <clears throat> I saw a way of sort of passing it through this subgenre, the folk horror genre, and kind of you know marrying those two things and and you know uh, f finding a way to make this big operatic just break breakup movie, <laughs> like dark comedy. Mm. I don't know. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, but, um, dark comedy. It is dark. I think it's it's great. It is funny. I, it I, is. I hope it's funny. I think it's great that it's a little bit of all of these different mm. things. It's not. You can't just say it's a horror movie because it's not just yeah. a horror movie. No, it's definitely yeah. not. If anything, it's it's really it's just. It's such a it's, crescendo. In all yeah, aspects, it, is, it ends like a hundred percent on everything. It's 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 moving upward towards something kind of grand, um, which is sort of similar to Hereditary. Yeah, that, I was going to say yeah. that, and and we actually had some fans ask us, you know, because Hereditary is sort of a bit of a slow build, <laughs> and then the floor drops out from underneath you, and you're sitting with your mouth open for the last I half just, hour. Of the I film. just love how in the last <laughs> ten minutes you're like, "Yep, yeah, that's fine. That's totally <laughs> normal. Okay, cool." I mean, should audiences expect sort of a similar adventure? Uh, y yes and no. Um, I, I mean, I, I, gosh, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I'm so close to both films that I, in a way, I, I, I have no objectivity. Um, but I, I, I do hope that uh, you know, viewers are, you know, enfolded in this world and that they get lost in it and. That it, it that they maybe get lost enough in it that you know, um, the ending, which is you know pretty prolonged, comes as uh, a surprise, and an emotional surprise. Is this a film if you've just gone through a breakup? <laughs> is this a film that you can go watch? Jesus and, Christ! Uh, That's a loaded question. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on who you are. <laughs> If you like Vindication, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like Vindication? Who doesn't love Vindication, right? That's a universal <laughs> positive. Jesus. What can we say? Um, what can we say about this festival? I think it's it's interesting. Is this based on a real festival that they go to? Is is it part real, part create fictional? What is this festival that they go to? As much as you can say about it. I mean, it's drawn from... Coachella. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Coachella. Yeah, it's from Coachella. No, some crazy it's, stuff. I'm playing, so. you know... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is a lot of music. Um, it, it's, it, it's drawn from uh, a, a lot of research, so there's a lot of actual tradition that's sort of buried in the film. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of folklore. Um, I mean, I was pulling from a lot of different spiritual movements that have nothing to do, uh, in many cases, with even Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there are hundreds of things kind of uh, woven together here. Uh, and the, la the launching off point for you was folklore? Yeah. Uh, yes, I would say. Was the launching off point? Yeah, sure, folklore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I because I've read a little bit of like like Scandinavian folklore. It's got all kinds of creatures and monsters in it, and, and is that sort of uh, stuff no, that helped kind of played into it at all? Or? No, there's there, there's nothing uh, overtly you know um, fantastical mm -hmm. here. Um, gosh. Uh, I reckon, like, from just from the experience of making the film yeah. and being from Ireland, which is obviously an incredibly superstitious place where there's a lot of folk culture going on, like, one of the best things about the story of the film is that, like, the relationship and the kind of social norms in which we exist, like, the, the lens through which you're viewing that in this film is really distorted by this, like, 
sense of like there's a tradition and that there's like a folk element behind it. So you're kind of watching it going, well, wait, from an anthropological point of view, this is just kind of what these people maybe do, you know? So you're always kind of on edge and not knowing, well, maybe it's kind of okay. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, how how much can you get away with? How much of this horror are we going to buy into before we, as like, the society that we live in go, oh, fuck, no, this yeah. is wrong. Yeah. You know, this is, like, fucked up, you know? <laughs> and that was what I loved about making it. That was the, 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 the interesting thing for me, the folk element of it that was really interesting was that it being a, you know, kind of like, there, like there's so much mythology and there's so much, so much of this um, history that we mm-hmm. don't know much about kind of leading us through the film and it kind of blurs the lines and, like it kind of throws the question up of like how much of this are we willing to accept and how far are we willing to go into this before we decide that it's obscene you know yeah that's like i think that's pretty masterful filmmaking to be fair gotta hand it to you man i love you (laughs) (laughs) i I think one of the things that's so fascinating too is that it's 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 set at a time where there's just daylight all the time and so if it's if it's bright and everything looks like a beautiful painting, is it is it harder to make things scary when it's so bright and so beautiful? Or does it even become even scarier when it's so bright and so beautiful? What I will say is um, one of the things that I really did realize later on in the day yesterday, I watched it yesterday at 10 with Ari, and I didn't really know what to say afterwards. And what I did end up realizing hours later was how much how many like graphic images I had seen without truly noting them as being something horrific. It was just totally beautiful. And that was down to like cinematography, palette, color, lighting. And you don't, in, until later do you realize what was actually happening in that scene. Mm-hmm. And in that moment when you're watching, like, God, that's beautiful. God, <laughs> I love the color of red. <laughs> but you're just so kind of in it, and, and everything is, is so um, exciting and, and, and vibrant on, on all your senses, like music, sight, I mean, I wish you could eat something whilst whilst watching it, but well, yeah. You could in some theaters. Yeah. You could, yeah, you could definitely. No, but like the Swedish food, can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't Everybody know, gets an egg yolk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, the egg yolk. How appetizing yolk. it was for you guys. Whatever those the meatballs maggot, were. The maggot head. Oh, my God. But it's amazing to like Christmas. watch a film. I don't think I've ever watched a film before where there's like so much darkness, like right in the middle of like this yeah. blistering light. You know what I mean? Like the whole thing is like lit in such a way where just everything is there. There's no shadows in any corners. Exactly. But there's a darkness everywhere, you know? That's which is wild. And I don't think we've ever really seen a film like that before. You know, I can't and think of one, yeah. I've heard the shoot was kind of arduous for you guys. God, what, yeah. what, you t- talk about that. What what was so arduous? What was so difficult? Well I mean he didn't eat for three months. Yeah. I had to force feed him protein bars in the morning. That's and then I'd come back to him like an hour later and be like, oh, did you eat the bar? Yeah. And he'd have like a half eaten bar mm-hmm. and he'd be like, eat the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, no, I mean, it was hard. We, you know, we were chasing the sun every day, mm. uh, which means that you're just desperately trying to avoid continuity errors, which you can't. Because uh, you're not shooting this where it's sunlight. 24 hours, you're shooting this. No, we didn't shoot in Sweden, we shot in Hungary, which, you know, they are sh- shorter days there. Um, but I mean, if you're, if you, you know, there were days where we would have to shoot 10 scenes in a day, which ultimately means that you, you're, you're, bu- you're bumping up against continuity problems less than, you know, the days where you're shooting one scene over the course of a day, because the sun is by the, you know, in the morning, the sun is in one place, mm-hmm. and in the afternoon it's, it's it's done a 180 and the shadows have shifted. I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm just like alerting people to what to, but to like just watch the yeah, sunshine. Like the trickiness of the storyline means that that is totally okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm, I'm like surprised. Like the weirdness how, of it helped actually. Yeah, I I know that my my cinematographer uh, Pavel Pogorzelski and I we we were panicked throughout the shooting uh, because we didn't know how how much. Uh, how well the uh, the continuity would hold up to scrutiny, and and we're I think both relieved that, <laughs> that you can just watch the movie. Um, well, one of the big kickers as well with the whole that whole component of chasing the light throughout every day, because also we're shooting in a valley, so like yeah. 
you know, there's like shadows everywhere at a certain time. We didn't really have that many hours in the day to shoot the light the way it needed to be shot, right? But add to that the fact that you've got a portion of people on set speaking English, a portion of people on set speaking Hungarian, and a portion of people speaking Swedish. You've got three different mm. primary languages going on on set, and how many people spoke all three? Maybe mm. one? Yeah, oh, wow. You know, so like it was it was incredibly arduous to coordinate anything that needed to be done, needed to be translated and understood by everyone in order to progress and to do anything, which I mean, that was pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it felt pretty Sisyphean making this. <laughs> it really did, yeah. yeah. Except it was it, like Fitzgerald. Yeah, it was, almost, it was almost like pushing up a boulder up a hill and everybody's on the other side pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, was it physical? Was there a lot of physical sort of stuff that you guys had to do in this film? No, I mean, we didn't have to, like, beat to each other up. I've got a bit of physical, <laughs> 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 bit of physical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jack had some physical therapy by the, yeah. at, at the end. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, you went there for his last no, day We can't so talk sorry. about it. We can't talk <laughs> about it. Don't worry. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I left when he had one of the, the biggest scenes. It was sad times. Everybody left, actually. Yeah. Everybody left. Everyone left when he had one it of was the just hardest me and scenes him. to do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that better though if nobody's there and if you have a really really difficult scene or do you um, want people there? I don't know. Maybe you. this one it would have been nice to have a couple of my mates to have a drink <laughs> afterwards. But I think you know. the thing is, is that it was such an emotional journey for all of us. Like take away the content, the like just the heat that we were shooting in. It was it was really hot. Um, we were in a field. That's By tricky. By a small airport yeah. as well, an airstrip where planes were taken off every five minutes <laughs> yes. and killing our sound yeah. department. So yeah. it was just like, okay, stop, we gotta stop for another plane. Yeah. There'd be like three World War I biplanes just yeah. flying around over <laughs> just be like, fuck you. <laughs> and we would have to try and shoot through that. Yeah, so aside from the content that we were shooting, it was like, it was, it was, it was meaty. So yeah, it's always nice to have a, a pal to go and have a, a neat drink with afterwards. Yeah, and I was wearing my safari gear. Oh, yeah, he's terrified Ari's of Lyme terrified disease. terrified of bugs. So mm -hmm. he had like the the, the gator <laughs> socks that <laughs> went over, and then the boots, and then the you know the beekeeper's hat yeah. that you have, and then the beekeeper's gloves that go. He was over colonial there. looking. He, was he looked like he should have been on the back of an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's gotta, so it's got to be hard. Yeah. It's to be hard to direct a film. <laughs> And everybody <laughs> thinks you look like an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but they would be green, green gators. They weren't even like a normal color. They were like bright fluorescent green. I know. Yeah, no. I, was, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was not in danger of being hit by a car. No. Or a good. bug. That's no, or a bug. Or a bug. You were fine. Not the bottom I of the yeah. <laughs> You made it out okay. I made it through. You survived. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a great film. <laughs> <laughs> you should go and watch it. <laughs> uh, talk about uh, Easter eggs. Are there Easter eggs in this film? What can people who are sort of nerds about that kind of stuff look for? Look at the walls. Look watch at the walls. the walls. We know that we should watch <laughs> yeah. the walls in the film. Yeah, I mean, there there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of peripheral information mm -hmm. that that connects to other stuff and a lot of stuff that's a lot of prophetic uh, detail that. Um, you know, if you don't catch it, then you'll, you know, hopefully you'll still enjoy the film. But it, but if you if you do catch it, I I think it it uh, it encourages like you know maybe um, uh, a, a more active investment or engagement, you know, with the material. Mm. Well, there's so grounds for multiple viewings. Well, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. Is it, it sounds like the kind of film that you really need to watch yeah. a lot a of times. A bit like Hereditary. Like, yeah. I didn't notice half of the stuff that happened in that until I watched it a second time, and I was like, oh, she's on the ceiling. <laughs> it's not quite like this on this one. But I do remember one day, like, we were doing this <laughs> really intense scene, and then Ari went, and like whispered me over and pointed to the monitor. And as he pointed, I was like, oh my god! <laughs> All because there was something on the wall. Watch the walls. Watch the That's like walls. the biggest tip that we're getting here. That's the tagline of the movie. Watch, watch the, the walls. walls. Watch, watch the, the walls. walls. Oh my god. Look, look closer. 
Is that American Beauty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> see theaters full of people being like, I don't know, I was watching the wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't ask me what happened, I'm just looking no at wall. No story time once. This, this is my wall viewing. Yeah. I've already seen the film twice, I'm just looking at the yeah, wall. Like, I, I, watched, I watched that interview and I was very disappointed. What do you hope audiences take away from this film? Guess how vindication. Vindication. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I really feel like, you know, like for me at least, making the film, it feels like something from, you know, another time. This is not a conventional horror movie. It doesn't feel like it fits into any boxes. And my favorite thing when I go to the theater and I see a movie is when you know, I watch something that is unique and striking and seems to be taking things in a different direction. And I really feel like that's something that this movie is doing. Um, it's capitalizing on the prestige of what is a conventional horror that we've had over the past kind of 10 years. And I think it's taken it to a different level. So I hope people are going to walk out of the theater feeling the same way. Which sounds refreshing. So if yeah. you're looking for something, if you're a horror fan, you're looking for something completely original and unique. And you're a big cinephile, I follow you on Instagram, yes, so I, I know, am. it's high praise. <laughs> Florence, what about you? What do you What do you hope people take away? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm really, I, honestly, I, I having watched it yesterday, I thought watching the film was gonna make me, it was gonna make things a lot clearer, and it hasn't, it's actually just complicated everything. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I don't really know what people are going to take from it other than that it's so stimulating. Mm. Like, what I was talking about earlier, everything, you are just shot with this injection of, of colour and sound and just visual beauty um, to the point where you don't even really realise that what you saw was awful. <laughs> like, the scenes it's were like awful. It's beautifully horrific, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like. So, um, I don't know what people will take from it because there are so many different kind of pathways of, of this storyline, but um, it's certainly colorful. Mm. Last words from the writer-director. What do you hope people take away? Uh, I just hope people are, you know, transported and moved and... That's a good word. And, mm. and confused. Yeah, that's also a good word. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Moving, transportation, and confusion. And you watch the company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, hope from, I, I hope they get from A to B. <laughs> well, and Brilliant. the film is Midsommar. comes out July 3rd. Ari Aster, Florence Pugh, Jack Rayner, thank you so much uh, for being here for this conversation. Watch the walls when you watch the film, and, uh, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We only do this every 90 years. I was most excited for you to come.